I was born in 1999, and when I was four months old, many people believed that the world would end because of Y2K, as computers and internet systems ticked over from 1999 to 2000, the new millennia, many people thought all these systems would break and it would be a massive catastrophe. And nothing substantial materialized from this, of course. But a few months later, the internet bubble burst. Companies such as Pets.com, which had reached massive inflated valuations, suddenly, essentially overnight, became defunct. And while the internet bubble did burst and it did kill many companies, it didn't kill the internet. Over the next 10 years, we saw a meteoric rise in certain companies as consumer adoption of internet really took off. New applications became possible. And one of those applications was social media. Before we get too deep into things, I'd like to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Notion. I talk a lot about being intentional with your attention. And in order to be intentional with your attention, you need to know where your attention is going. You need a system that tracks the things that you're doing. And for someone like me, it can be pretty hard to build a system like that because I have a bunch of things going on in different parts of my world. And this is why I love Notion. Notion is like a second brain for me. I use it for capturing ideas that I have while I'm out and about or for sitting down and writing out documents and structuring those thoughts further. I've built databases in Notion, logging my workouts, and I've used their calendar tool to create schedules for my days. It's really become this integral part of my everyday life. I've used it for many years now, and I can imagine that I will be using it for many years to come. And so if you're looking to get more intentional with your attention, if you're looking to start tracking what you're doing with your life and putting it in a place where you can actually look at it and think, is this what I want to be doing? And you can plan out how you want to change it. I recommend that you check out Notion and you try and build such a system for yourself. There's a link in my bio if you want to check it out. And again, I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. Wherever you want to say that social media began, whether it's on message boards or MySpace or something else, there's no denying the rise that it had in the 2000s and early 2010s. And this was particularly interesting for me personally because I essentially came of age as social media came of age. 2012 is a year that a lot of people talk about when talking about social media. It's the point where most Americans have smartphones and Facebook accounts. And it's also the year that I became a teenager. In middle school, all of my friends started to get Facebook accounts and Instagram accounts and Snapchat accounts. And suddenly these were the places to be. If you weren't on these platforms, you were missing out on really critical pieces of the social fabric of being a teenager. But social media was still relatively new. These were the days of physical home buttons on iPhones and physical keyboards on Blackberries. We would talk to each other on MSN Messenger and Blackberry Messenger, platforms that some of you probably don't even recognize today. And social media companies were brand new as well. Twitter had a chronological feed and skeuomorphic design. Things weren't that well optimized yet. But in the years following 2012, this really started to change because billions and billions of dollars started to flow into optimizing social media. The money flowed like this because social media had unlocked pretty much the best business model of all time. It's the attention economy. You create an ecosystem that captures attention organically and then you sell that attention to advertisers. It costs you pretty much nothing to capture that attention other than your server costs and advertising revenue is great. And so in the early days of social media, this business model worked out really well for pretty much everyone involved. Users had a cool place where they could spend time and talk to their friends, and companies had a great place to make money. But these times ended pretty quickly. Companies have to grow. And users, people like you and me, only have so much attention to give. And as it became clear, just how good this business model was, more and more companies started to crowd into the space to try to capture it. And so we end up in this place where we have billion dollar companies, trillion dollar companies, employing in-house psychologists to try to figure out how to create the best platform for capturing attention. That's what's happening on social media today. And this is the origin of many features that we take for granted. The red notification bells, algorithmic feeds as opposed to chronological feeds, infinite scrolling timelines, and more recently, infinite swiping timelines. All of these features feel benign, they feel very natural. We kind of take them for granted, but they're designed very intentionally. From an economic perspective, it makes perfect sense why companies would do this. It's a profitable thing for companies to do, and companies are trying to make profit. 
And also, the influence on users, people like you and me, because we're subjected to these powerful attention-capturing mechanisms, many of us spend all of our waking hours, all of our free hours, just scrolling. Bouncing around between TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and so on. Pretty much every minute of our attention is captured. And the question that I think is worth asking is, is this good for us? There are a lot of people who will tell you that social media is bad for you because the content on it promotes a destruction of values, so on and so forth. A lot of these people have something to sell you, whether that's their ideology, a course on how to find a girlfriend, or, or something else. I'm not so sure about this. A lot of the content that I consume on social media, I think, is a net positive, or at least net neutral. A lot of it is just mindless entertainment, and there's a time and place for mindless entertainment. And this is pretty much all the discourse about social media. But I think something that people don't talk about as much, that I think is actually the reason why social media is bad, it is hurting a lot of people, is just purely the time aspect. There are only so many hours in a day. And even if we view social media as a neutral activity, filling your day with a neutral activity necessarily pushes out positive activities. By positive activities, I mean things that are inherently constructive. Sleeping, going to the gym, and think about it. Be, be honest with yourself. Have you ever come home with the intention of going to the gym or exercising and then just sat there on your phone scrolling instead? Or have you gone to bed thinking that you'll get a good night's sleep, but instead you've laid there watching videos or scrolling memes on your phone? I definitely have. I think most people have. And it's my opinion that this is where social media is doing harm to people on mass. I think that there are specific cases where it does specific harm if you're consuming specific types of content, for sure. But on mass, in the general population, I believe that social media is harmful because of the displacement of positive activities. The biggest one is sleep. Something that we know about sleep is that it's tremendously important. It's pretty much a super drug for your brain and for your body. And in particularly for developing brains and bodies, sleep is really important. For adolescents, you need sleep in order to develop properly. But if we look at the trends of how much adolescents have been sleeping, we can see that they're sleeping less. And when we inquire as to why they're sleeping less, it's pretty clear that technology and social media plays a pretty significant role. So the issue with social media, in my opinion, is not so much that teenagers are watching brain rot content for a couple of hours. I don't think that's a big deal. I think the big deal is that those couple of hours are hours that they should be spending sleeping. And this is the trap of social media, right? In order to be a happy person, you need to direct some of your energy and attention into achieving that, right? It won't just happen. But social media wants all of your attention. And if you let it take all of your attention, then you won't be a happy person because you're not directing your energy into the things that will make you happy. And so putting it like this, the solution becomes abundantly clear. The solution is to identify the things that will make you happy, identify the things that will build you up, and to protect your attention around those things. Protect your sleep, protect your exercising, protect walks, whatever it is that builds you up. Protect it. Don't let your attention be pulled away from that. What are the activities that build you up? What attention do you have to direct in your day-to-day -day life to be a happy person? And how can you hold yourself accountable to directing your attention to those things? There are different systems for different folks, but I think what's important is that you have a system, that you think about this. Because if you don't think about this, your attention is just going to be pulled away and you will lose control of it and it won't lead you down a path to being a happy person. That's just my experience. Control your attention and you control your life. Control your life and you have a shot at making that a good life, which is all that any of us can really ask for. So hopefully those videos made you think a little bit about your relationship with social media. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe. I'll see you again soon.